I can see the problem and I can see that it's antiquated, but why do we need to fix it? You can still put things on Mars and Einstein can still make all these great discoveries and we can still do incredible science using SI units. Mm -hmm. Why are we fixing this? Well, we'll still be using SI units, right, in that sense, because things really aren't changing very much. What does change is, strangely, by redefining the units in this way, firstly, you make them much more transferable. As I say, it makes it easier for different people to reproduce each other's experiments, because no longer do we have to refer everything to some you know, kilogram mass that you don't actually have access to, which means that one group of, of experimenters doing an experiment in one country and another group of experimenters doing a, an experiment in another country, they may get an answer that disagrees, which could be interesting, but it might just be because they each were using slightly different definitions of the kilogram. By going back to these more fundamental units where everyone has access to the speed of light and Planck's constant, so everyone can make the measurements themselves, it means that these things are much more transferable and, and reproducible around the world. And for that reason, it actually brings down, for a lot of physics-type experiments, it actually brings down the error bars on things. Some things the errors get bigger because things which were previously defined, like the meter, suddenly have an uncertainty associated with them. But for many of the things that physicists are very interested in, by defining the units in this way, you can actually make more accurate measurements just by redefining the units. It seems like sort of sleight of hand, but really you can actually make more reproducible, accurate measurements by defining the units in this way. And it, that's really the end of things that it matters. Right? In terms of our bag of sugar, it doesn't matter at all which of these definitions of a kilogram you use, because for a bag of sugar, it's always going to come out way more or less the same. Right? But for subtle physics experiments, it can actually be by redefining the units in a clever way, you can actually make better measurements than you could do with the current definitions. These scientists at the moment who are using these measurements to such fine grain uh, amounts that this matters, where are they getting their definition of a kilogram? Because they're not going to Paris into the vault. What are they using? So they're, at some level, they must be using these reference kilograms. That were, so there are these copies of the fundamental kilogram in Paris, which have been sent out around the world and are being looked after in various national labs and with more or less the same you know, degree of care as the one in Paris. And then every now and then, one of them is taken out so you can make another reference from it that you can then propagate to other places. But you can see that's, there's lots of potential for errors creeping in by doing things that way. And these are then used to calibrate someone's scales? Or... Yeah, at some fundamental level, everything is, you can eventually trace it back to this one mass in, in Paris, but, 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 but by a rather lengthy chain of things, which means that there really is a lot of potential for error to creep in. So now, Professor Smith in a lab in the United States, when he or she starts their experiment, they'll be able to just, if they really want to get their kilogram correct, what, they can go and vibrate a cesium atom and then start multiplying things by... Exactly, like, exactly. Or, you know, the actual experiments you do would probably be, again, at several steps removed from that, but it would be much more directly traceable to things that they could do in their own lab rather than something which requires them to have shipped a mass halfway around the world. This isn't going to affect astronomy, is it? Not really, no. I mean, given that astronomers are generally happy if they get an answer right to within a factor of two, worrying about the ninth decimal place is not something that astronomers worry about all that much. Does this, do you, but this is, you find this interesting? Uh, yeah, actually I do, because, I, you know, it's just kind of, it, it appeals to the, the, the nerd in me that actually you can, because it's, you know, it's not something that people really think about all that much, you know, it's a, it's a kilogram, well, but how do you know it's a kilogram? And what is a kilogram is not, it's a sort of a rather fundamental question and it's kind of nice to try and get to the bottom of it. It's sort of interesting to know that it's not, it's a moving target, right? It's actually evolved over the years as to what a kilogram is and it looks like probably, I think the date for this to change again is about 2018. So it's in the not too distant future, the definitions are going to change. Don't you find it romantic that there's a piece of metal in a vault in Paris that is so important? Uh, it, yeah, but the, you know, the trouble with the romance is it sometimes gets in the way of science, and I think this is one of those cases where, yes, having that romantic definition is, is, is unhelpful to the scientists. Okay. Yeah, I'll buy that.